Okay, how's everyone going? This video is gonna be short, sharp, and straight to the point. I've just got back from a pretty cool job inspecting power lines with the Matrice 300 RTK using the H20T payload. And this is a mind-blowing drone and no doubt one of the most advanced pieces of technology, drone technology out there in the world hands down this thing is super impressive this video i'm going to take you through a full app walkthrough of the interface in the youtube video i'll make it full screen so you can get a better better look at it so let's start shall we so right from the very top left digi icon this will take you through to the main menu to the right of that it says in flight gps uh, that's basically just your status bar so if you need to calibrate your compass or you're waiting for gps signal it'll be orange or red just underneath that, it should, it's in red, orange, and green. That's your battery indicator, similar to the other DJI apps. Now, back up to the top. So that's your flight mode. Moving along, that's your GPS signal strength. It'll tell you the number of satellites that, satellites that it's locked onto. And then to the right of that is obstacle sensing functions. So if it's all green, that means all the obstacle sensors are enabled. If any of those are red, it means they're off. So just be careful with that. Moving along, the remote controller signal, so that's the signal quality or strength from your controller to the aircraft. Next along, HD, so that's your video signal strength, so that's how strong the signal is for your the video link, so what you're seeing on the camera from the drone into the app. Next along is your battery levels, so the M300 has two massive batteries, uh, make sure you keep an eye on those and it'll tell you the voltage and percentage. And that's sitting there. Next along, the three buttons. So if you tap on that, this will take you into the extra settings. Uh, same as the other apps, it gives you the little drone icon on the left. Um, this will enable you to control uh, your flight mode switches, your home point settings, uh, return to home altitude, all that kind of stuff. But what is new in this is it has a setting here called gravity auto calibration. So if you change your payloads um, or change your cameras, you can hit auto calibrate and it will basically work out the center of gravity again based on this payload uh, to enable you to have you know better better flying. Underneath that, you've got your perception settings or your sensors. So this is broken down into three parts as well. So you've got your horizontal obstacle avoidance part, your vertical, and then in the advanced. And what you'll notice as well now is um, you can set obstacle braking. So when you're flying along and there's an obstacle in the way, you can set between one to 10 meters of an object for the drone to physically break which is kind of cool or if you're a beginner and flying or you're flying around i guess high voltage power lines and things like that and you're a bit worried you can set that you know let's say three meters and it will physically stop when it gets into that area underneath that is real-time obstacle sensing so what this is is it will um basically just show you on the display of where your drone is and it'll give you a warning but not physically stop the drone. Everything else pretty standard. Um, then you've got your remote controller settings, your HD transmission settings so you can switch between dual band or 2.4 or 5.8 gigahertz um, depending on where you are. So that's that. Then you've got aircraft settings and gimbal settings once again. And then because this is an RTK drone as well, you've got your RTK settings. Uh, which is similar to the M210 and the other other drones, but that basically gives you um, some telemetry around uh, the GPS signal and the sensors and uh, longitude, latitude. It gets pretty technical, but it, that's where all of that is. Three little dots on the bottom. This will take you through some other common settings. One thing to note, if you're in uh, search and rescue or doing some surveillance, you can select uh, the LED settings here. And what you can actually do is you can set it to discrete mode. So when you're in the air, all the lights pretty much turn off. So it will be a little bit difficult to spot. You will be able to hear it depending on how high the drone is, but that's where those settings are. All right, so now going back out into the main screen again, on the left, you've got a little bell icon. Now this is a message box. So if there's any kind of information, if there's a plane nearby or you need to calibrate your compass or whatever, this will be displayed here in the message box. Now to the right of that, this is your gimbal orientation adjustment. So this is where you can actually adjust your gimbal orientation. You can center it up again, or you can look straight down. 
or you know reset the yaw other bits and pieces like that to do with the gimbal um, adjustments to the right of that to a little light blurb this is your beacon you can turn this on and off so on top of the drone there's a really bright light and underneath it as well that will flash so it's easier to spot you can turn that on and off discrete mode once again if you're in surveillance next to that is multiple gimbal control so this is if you have multiple gimbals you can attach up to three different payloads on this aircraft and if you want it all to be in sync with where you're where you're filming um, this is where you can toggle between it so if you're moving the drone to the left and you want all the payloads to follow it um, you can do that uh, with this button here nice and easy next to that is the smart track this is really cool this is the using the ai technology so if uh, basically what it is is you can when you tap on that if you're let's say in, like today inspecting this conductor or this power line you can select the area and what happens is it will lock onto this particular part that you've selected and no matter where you move your drone left right up and down the camera will lock on straight into that which is super super impressive and very handy to have now if you're in surveillance and you want to identify people or cars you can also do that so what happens is uh, you take you tap the button and it'll automatically pick up cars that are moving using with these little yellow icons or yellow circles and if you tap on those circles it'll follow that vehicle or follow that person and if it's if the vehicle starts getting away from you it'll also start automatically zooming in to this particular car which is pretty awesome and you know once again at zoomed at the maximum it did struggle to lock onto this car so. so next moving along is pin now this is the pin point so what happens is if you select this icon here it'll drop a pin on the image but also on your google maps or in the maps field so if you have identified someone let's say that's gone missing or a billboard or a uh, you know like a mobile tower and you want to see where this is on a map to to just double check that this is the right tower that you're inspecting uh, or you're conducting a line of sight survey for let's say for example then this is a super handy feature to use and it also gives you the longitude and latitude the distance uh, down the bottom here which is once again very impressive then next to that, which kind of works hand in hand between them, um, is RNG stand is your laser ranging or laser range finder. So you tap on that, and what that is is it shoots out a laser. You obviously can't see it, but it will give you an indication of the range from your drone to what you've selected. Now there is a, a, a range on this. The manual says between three to 1200 meters, so 1.2 kilometers away, you'll be able to identify the distance from your aircraft. Very handy there. Now next to that in green is your camera and zoom. So it'll just tell you what camera you're on, whether you're in your wide um, or infrared and so on. And it'll give you the zoom level as well, just so you have an idea. Next to that is your camera parameters, um, which gives you your ISO, your shutter and your EV value. Um, next to that auto exposure lock same same as the other app so you can tap on that to unlock it tap on the screen and it will automatically expose to that area uh, then lock it up again and then start shooting if you don't want to manually create uh, correct it next on the left IR that's your infrared camera so if you select that it goes into the thermal radiometric camera and you can determine um, basically you can set a temperature range so if you're looking for humans um, at night someone's gone missing you can select the temperature range there so it'll only pick up uh, the range where your body heat might fall in um, or you can set it wide as possible it's pretty cool uh, it's a very very wide temperature range then you can also select the color palette as well so you can select white hot black hot rainbow all of these other different color, color palette options um, underneath that IR is your wide camera so if you switch to your wide camera take note this is only 12 megapixels but it doesn't matter still it's still very very sharp but that's a quick setting to get into the wide angle camera moving along this is your zoom dial i guess so it'll tells you how far along you're zooming in take note another really interesting feature here is when you start zooming in it doesn't fully zoom in on the camera just yet uh, it shows a little green box first to the area of where the frame will be and then when you tap on the blue zoom icon or the button there then it locks straight into that frame which is another really handy tip to use uh, and also feature just so you're not 
trying to find something zoomed in all the way, which can be very, very difficult. And then on the right, it's kind of the same stuff, your menu, your toggle between photo and camera, your shutter button, play button, uh, parameter settings, we can set annually set your camera. There's one new feature here, which is called grid. Now this is also fantastic for power lines. So if you select grid, what happens is it, there's a series of grids that open up on your screen in a dotted line and you can move and stretch this according. And you can basically, when you hit the shutter button, it will take higher resolution images on each of those icons or each of those squares in the grid. And we'll also stitch that together. So when you hit playback, not only will you get the whole image as one, but you'll also get the individual images at the highest resolution on that camera. So here in this example, we'll use three, um, the three images or the three grids, hit go, and it selects the top one, shoots the bottom, middle one, and then also shoots the bottom one and away you go. So this is very, very useful for inspection purposes. Then down the bottom right, you've got your FPV view, and on the left is your map, so same as before. Next up, I'll run you through what's in the middle. It's kind of like a little compass, a little round area. In the middle of that compass is the drone, is the aircraft and the direction that it's pointing and heading, and it's noted in red. So it's like a little red arrow, that's your actual aircraft. The top of the circle here in green, um, it's that's your bearing. So that will give you an idea of where the direction of your drone is facing. Now this is really useful for line of sight surveys. Let's say you're looking at a B end that's at 075 degrees. You can literally lock that on to the exact direction and then tilt your camera up and then you'll be able to find that uh, mobile tower there. So that's super handy. On the right, ALT, that's your altitude. You can set that to feet and meters. On the left is your speed, SPD. Set that to meters per second, kilometers per hour, miles per hour, whatever you choose. Now underneath that, which is really interesting, WS is your wind speed. I'm not sure how they do it, but that gives you the direction of the wind and also the wind speed. So underneath the wind speed, is where you've dropped your pin. So earlier on I showed you where when you hit the pin button, it drops a pin on the map. This will give you how many meters away that pin is to your aircraft and also the direction. So if you turn your drone around and spin it around, it will give you an idea of exactly where it is in terms of where you're facing, um, sorry, where the aircraft is facing. And just above that in the red, that's where that laser range finder comes into play. So if you tap on range, RNG, the red arrow crosshair appears. Uh, once you've locked that on, once it's red, that means it has given you a reading and then it will show you the distance from the aircraft to that particular spot away uh, you are. Now coming back to the circle in the middle, so You've got your H, that's your home point where you've taken off from. And what's really cool is not only it shows you where it is in terms of orientation, um, if you move the drone physically around and look on the ground where you took off from, it will place that H, the helipad, um, or the home point of where you've taken off from. So that's kind of cool as well. What else is also interesting, in this particular example, we only used one payload, but if you have three payloads, on the aircraft facing different orientations, you can actually see on this circle here which direction they're facing. Now, it will show you in different colors. At the moment, we've only got the one, so it's in orange, um, but it will show a little blue or a purple um, little dot on that dial of the direction of where those payloads are facing. So you might have your thermal camera looking this way. You might have another zoom camera looking the other way. And that just kind of gives you an overall view of where the direction of where it's looking at. Now, and then to the right of that, just where altitude is, underneath that VS is your vertical speed, so how fast you're flying. And then underneath that ASL is above sea level, so how high you are above the sea level. That's pretty much it. So that's the whole walkthrough of the app. It's uh, once again, super impressive. Hope this gives you a good overview of the app walkthrough using the H20T payload on the M300. Uh, if you like this video, there'll be more to come, so don't forget to hit subscribe. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.